<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week, Justin Davis. Scoop. Jared Petty. Howdy. Brian Altano. Brrah! We've got a great show for this week. We ought to talk a little bit more about Nintendo. We're going to talk about some of the worst games IGN has ever reviewed. But first, big topic this week comes from Game Scoop fan Michael Brown in Norfolk, England. Oh. He emailed us at gamescoop at IGN.com, just like you can. You. Uh, and he says, I like the idea of gameplay mechanics, which make the gamer... <laughs> <laughs> We've come out in favor solidly of gameplay mechanics. Finally. Which, okay, yeah, we're there. Gameplay mechanics, which make the gamer feel a level of unease or difficulty that comes directly from real-world concerns. Mm, okay. I.e. discrimination in Papers, Please, the war on drugs in Narco Guerra game? I'm not familiar with that game. Or keeping all of a country's people happy in the Tropico series. Mm -hmm. Even the daily balash of, a, of running a farm in Farm Simulator. With games being uniquely interactive and becoming increasingly real, do you think there's value and perhaps even an obligation to branch out of purely entertainment aspects? Especially when the medium's interactivity is capable of adding a real kind of friction to the gamer's experience. Like the unease of decision making in Mass Effect. Interesting. Wow. Uh, hey, hello. Yeah. Welcome to Games. <laughs> <laughs> no, Damn. No, for sure. I mean, uh, he, well, Michael, you're absolutely right that uh, games being interactive and putting people in the situation uh, makes them sort of uniquely teachable in a way that, like, you know, movies or other mediums aren't. Like, you have to make the choice. Like, Papers, Please is a great example mm -hmm. of, like, helping people sort of understand big, heady issues that are normally hard to wrap their head around. Um, I certainly don't think there's any kind of moral obligation, though, because creators are, uh, yeah. you know, creative, and they have no obligation to make anything for anyone. They're not sure. beholden to, you know, um, I would never tell anybody what they can and can't make. They can make whatever they want for whatever reason they want. Yeah, yeah. there's not an obligation, but there is a great impetus to. There's, there's going to be a lot of incentives to do this. As games grow in complexity, and as they grow in an art, as an art form, I think people are going to demand more and more of this. I mean, sometimes you want to have a game where you're just running around shooting things. You, you want to play Doom. Uh, and sometimes you want to discover there's a little more to the medium. I, I think about how, I, I like to imagine what it must be like for a younger person to play Gone Home, for example. Uh, a game that forces you into the role of being sympathetic for a family member who's going through something very difficult without mm -hmm. spoiling too much. And you Ghosts. are placed in that role. Yeah. Uh, it, no it, it forces you to take on the persona of a person. In a sense, you are psychologically projected onto a different perspective than you may have in life, a different situation than you could ever live. And once you've gone through something like that and, and seen what's possible, it, it does make you look at for other experiences of that kind. So while I wouldn't be comfortable with the word obligation, I do think that uh, there's a lot of incentive on the part of developers to continue to branch out into those areas simply because those kinds of experiences are so rewarding. And, you know, one, in a just pure capitalist way, people will buy them. And second, in the drive to create something new, unique, and artistic, which is a lot of what drives people who make video games, they're going to want to do something that hasn't been done before, that emotionally sure. impacts the player. That just the, you know, the people who make video games make them because they love video games, and that kind of person is going to be drawn to do new things. Sure. Yeah, Brian, what do you think? God, that, that was great. <laughs> Did you just? <laughs> that was really good. Did you take care of everything? Yeah, I mean, I a lot, a lot of obviously. Uh, a lot of the story elements in video games come from the experiences of the people who have played them, which means that ideally, if we create a world that isn't horrific and racist and awful, <laughs> then video games will be, as a reflection of that, will be better, right? Uh, I, I, I do see the learning value of, and benefit of that, an educational benefit of, of, of experimenting or experiencing something that you wouldn't normally understand in your real life and maybe seeing something through the eyes of a character. But I, I also think that it shouldn't be up to video games to teach those lessons. I feel like that's the world should kind of get that together first. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, I love that video games are heading in that direction. It's actually it's it's amazing, especially as somebody that grew up watching video games just being like squares and circles interacting. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's incredible, and I think it's important. But I also think that being a good parent is important too. So there's two things here. There's uh, games and movies that try to have a message that are actively, uh, you know, have politicized something and are trying to communicate something like. You know, I don't know how many people watched Blood Diamond, and it's like, man, I don't think I want to get like a diamond engagement ring anymore. Mm -hmm. But then you can also take something away from something in an unintended way, or you know, likely unintended way. Um, even something you know, sort of as dumb as like Call of Duty. Um, I was playing one of the Call of Duty campaigns, and they're loud, and uh, you know, there's things flying at you, and someone shouting in your ear, and there's the jelly all over your screen, and 
there's a moment where uh, I died on this checkpoint like a million times, and I'm trying to get through it, trying to get through it, and it's stressful. Like the commander, you know, Johnson, you got to push up the line, and I'm shooting, trying to take out these enemies, and then you know, once sort of the smoke cleared and uh, everything cleared up, I realized I've been shooting at my own teammates. Mm-hmm. I wasn't shooting at the enemies, and like I had this tiniest like flash of like insight into like, oh shit, like. I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't want to be trite and be like, I played Call of Duty and I understand what war is like. But I did take away some of, like, it really captured that feeling of, like, just the confusion that people in a real situation must feel at sometimes. And, like, I, I had, like, this momentary insight into, you know, what is ostensibly supposed to be, you know, the equivalent of, like, a summer blockbuster. But, right. but I still was able to sort of take something away from it. So... So, so I, 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 I think, you know, people can, being in a situation can learn something and can take something away from an experience, even if, you know, the creators didn't necessarily intend it. Like, author intent, um, you know, is only half of it. Mm-hmm. That's, really, that's really well put. Michael goes on to say, maybe pure entertainment within games, ironically, has its limitations as the industry matures. Would IGN consider a score measure within reviews that goes beyond entertainment factors? It's interesting. Um, because obviously video games did start out as just games, just purely entertainment, you know. And now as the industry's maturing, they're definitely branching out into other interesting areas. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, I think what I'm still looking for out of a video game is enjoyment. You know, even if it's... Yeah. Even if it has some sort of... I, I'll, I'll take, mes- illumi- I'll take illumination when I can get it, though. I mean, yeah. when it's, especially when it sneaks up on me. Sure. A lot of times the preachiest things aren't the ones that are going to grab me. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's like you said, that unexpected emergent moment or the twist that you don't see coming that's not so ham-fisted and heavy-handed. Yeah. You know, because uh, sometimes they try to teach you a lesson and you're not sure what to do with it. But. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't believe a, a video game is inherently better in, in attempting at doing that. They're, I mean, it's probably... We should reward developers that... Um, attempt that and can pull it off with mm-hmm. some clarity. But I've seen plenty of examples or plenty of times in games where somebody will attempt to shoehorn some sort of political or, or uh, spiritual or life message into it. And it just doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't work because it's just like you're in, in this fantasy, escapist, goofy world and they're trying to get this message across. And it's like, it's, it's nice here and there. But like I, I do still think that video games are something that we escape to. And um, I think there is merit in them being just simply enjoyable mm-hmm. like I wouldn't yeah. put one above another just because it, it's like well this one really got into uh, this one really made fun of George W. Bush so <laughs> that makes it better than Tetris it's like well not necessarily <laughs> but it's know? often allegorical right like it yeah. is in all fiction especially like uh, you know science fiction is almost always sort of like well we can't really talk about racism on television so let's just put it on some alien planet mm-hmm. um you know, or up in the sky in the case of like Bioshock Infinite although that was um, very on the nose but still yeah. you know a level of abstraction there um and in answer of his question about how it might affect our review scale, without trying to speak for Dan, our reviews editor, I think it's fair to say that we have uh, uh, probably noted the bad storytelling that takes place in some games as a detractor, uh, mm-hmm. especially when that storytelling is shoved down our throats. I, I can think of a couple of reviews where that came into the, the body of the text as something was explained. And likewise, good writing and writing that made us think or made a point or struck home emotionally uh, has sure. been praised and has affected uh, the positive nature of our reviews. So I think that's already happening and will continue to happen. Yeah. And and I, on the same page, games that have none of those things also get pretty Yes, yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Games, games that are pure mechanics. Like really fun match seven puzzle games that have with nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> that's better than Mass 3. Yeah. I'm, wow. I'm, that's, we're going to the future now. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mean, there's room for everything, you know? And that's, 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 that's what's wonderful about the industry right now is that you see all of that stuff happening at the same time and not one or the other. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Altana's exactly right. I, I don't speak for Dan, you know, again, he's our reviews editor, but um, I certainly think any reviewer is looking at things through the lens of, like, did the game accomplish what it was trying to do? Mm-hmm. And different games are trying to do different things. So, you know, a mobile game that's a puzzle game, you know, maybe you only play that game for two minutes, but but that's not a problem, but that's a giant problem in, like, a shooter, for example. So yeah. it's like, you know, did, did the game accomplish its goals or what near as you can tell you think its goals were? I, I mean, I think it's yeah. super valid for a critic to consider that. Sure. But just like Altano was saying, games are finally at the point where they're just like any other medium like movies, uh, books, music, where there's just everything and right. every type of game, every something for everyone. 
movies last year, we got art house films like Birdman, and then you got super cool kung fu movies like The Raid 2, and then mm -hmm. giant summer blockbusters like Guardians of the Galaxy, and then games are just like that now. You've got your blockbusters, and then you've got your Gone Homes and Papers, Please also. It's like, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Everything. I mean, that's, that's, that's incredible that you have that breadth of medium right now. The it's games a, are even different because they're, they're, you know, a movie has an understood, you know, the medium has like some limits of like, look, you're going to be in between, you know, 80 minutes and 180 minutes long. And, uh, you know, they're going to have people likely not talking to camera, you know, except for a few mm -hmm. exceptions. Like, that medium is established in a way that video games are much more wide open than sure. that. Like, of, you know, Uncharted or uh, The Order is like, and I they have threes on my phone, but they're the game, both a video yeah. game. The game yeah. Piece, yeah. Yeah. But they, they couldn't be more different in their yeah. goals or in how you mm -hmm. experience them or how that's delivered to you. And so that's a unique, I don't know if it's a challenge or an opportunity or, you know, how to quite phrase it, but that's something that's, Unique to video games, you know, compared to compared to songs or albums, movies, television, compared to anything else that's unique. Yeah. To games. Although you do get some people who are basically like, I don't, I only play AAA games on my PS4, sure. mm -hmm. and I only see summer blockbusters in movie theaters. You know? those, yeah. Like they, people want that sort of like booming, loud, yeah, sound and visual explosion in their faces when, when they're when they're experiencing something through uh, a giant screen. So sure. Or you know they just want you know bombastic experiences yeah, showing something that's super cool and mm -hmm. yeah. Michael ends his email with the show is fucking great. Yeah. Oh damn! Thank you, Thank Michael. Thank you for your work, guys. By the way, Platonic.com is taken. Sorry, Justin. Yeah. I know. Yeah, we had a story about Platonic on the site just yesterday. Yeah, yeah. We people people called us out for not remembering that they were uh, the the development studio spun off of a lot of former Rare people. It's right. called Platonic. Yeah, they're the guys making the Banjo Kazooie spiritual successor. Right. But last week we were talking about how to make gaming friends as an adult. Yeah. And Justin had the idea of Platonic as a company that would like hook you up with gaming friends. It's the best idea. It's still the best idea. It's pretty wonderful. Yeah. Just like swipe, swipe. Good email, Michael Brown from Norfolk, England. Damn right. Uh, moving on, this is from Emperor G. Wow, wow. This one's gonna be great. Who says, salutations and good morrow to thee from England. To a lot of English yeah. emails today. Yeah. After is that having, all that Chucky Egg talk? I'm sorry. After having viewed videos on your YouTube channel regarding the latest <laughs> developments in Nintendo, I wanted to share some of my ideas of what might have been. Ever since the release of the Wii U, I've had the theory that Nintendo would have been better off teaming up with Apple. Mm -hmm. I must say I'm not a big fan of Nintendo or Apple. However, I believe Apple would have helped Nintendo to better address the goals of the Wii U, i.e. Tab tablet games, screen sharing, Miiverse infrastructure, etc. Also, an install base of every iPhone and Apple device would have greatly aided the accessibility and proliferation of Nintendo's IP. In my eyes, each partner would play to each other's strengths and aims. Would you agree, or am I just talking nonsense? So Apple and Nintendo are similar companies in, in some ways already. The, these are both companies that kind of provide alternate universe takes on, on other established technologies. Yeah, they're, uh, they're vertically integrated with hardware and software, which yeah. is unusual. Yeah, and they, and they exist, integrated. you know, the, the PC market is still much larger than, than the Macintosh market. Now, the iPhone market uh, has been dominant for a long time, but it's gradually losing share to more open platforms again. So these are these are sort of... Neat, nifty, upper echelon kind of, uh, we talked about the Blue Ocean strategy last time, you know, clear water takes on, on, mm -hmm. on reaching into emerging markets and reaching users of electronic devices or software that might not otherwise be drawn to that medium. Nintendo does the same thing. That's mm -hmm. their whole strategy over the last few years. So they have some similarities. I'm not crazy about the idea of the two of those together because I think weird plus weird sometimes equals freaky. Um, I like Apple products. I like sounds, Nintendo products. Sounds kind of hot. Some good yeah. math. <laughs> uh, you know, no, I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I carry an iPhone. I, I use a Macintosh computer. And I you carry a 3DS. The, huh? And, and I carry, carry a 3DS. 3DS. Yeah, around where I go. And so I, I don't, um, but I don't think I want these things that I like merged together because that many odd ideas might just suddenly start to move beyond functional and into some wacky world of, of zaniness that I don't want to play with. I don't want to have Toontown on my phone, and I'm afraid that's what might happen. Yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, it's not... Uh, it's not it's Toontown. Toontown is, is where Eddie Valiant went with Roger Rabbit. Oh, and okay. it's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. 
Like, it's a fun hypothetical to kind of think about, but the reality, like, the real-world scenario is that I don't think that that's super plausible. You know, Japanese yeah. gaming giant, uh, you know, I mean, 100 both, years worth of history ingrained in, uh, you know, Japanese corporate I, culture. I don't, I, don't, I don't see any scenario in which their entire identity isn't completely inhaled by Apple's, yeah, it, which is what has happened with almost any company that is merged with Apple in, I think, in some capacity. I think but, what's more likely uh, would be Disney. Now, I've brought that up before, you know. Nintendo and Disney. Well, yeah, Disney yeah. choosing to, you know, or buy just buying Nintendo. up. Because they have um, so many. Nintendo loves to buy up IPs. Mm -hmm. and Nintendo has so many. I mean, it's a great fit. Like, there's uh, you know, the synergy, which I hate that word, but it's super true, right? Like, everything that Disney's good at could be really, really good for all of Nintendo's big properties. Um, oh, Magic awesome. Kingdom Hearts in that world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aside from like mashups and games, like how so? I don't. I don't see how Disney has any experience in television hardware shows, or theme, software, theme song. Oh, you're you, term, you, you mean in terms of like branching out their IP? Like what could they do? You know, uh, Disney Infinity, all their toys. You know, so Disney is toys. You know, real world theme park experiences mm -hmm. and you know media experiences. Because I, I, I don't see how they would help their game division in any. Well, capacity. so Nintendo. I mean, Nintendo helps Disney's game division, yeah. right? So then you give Nintendo the rights to do stuff with Disney characters and Marvel characters and Star Wars characters, and it just becomes. Like, to me, that's, if a Western company were to pick up Nintendo, I think they'd be a better fit than Apple. I think that, like, they're, they seem buried and swamped in enough responsibility alone to keep their own <laughs> IPs, uh, keep a, afloat. And they're doing a good job of it. They're, they're obviously, right. they're, they're, making, they're making some of the best games they've ever made. They're still yeah. continually, and we talked about this in the show, about how they were one of the highest rated developers, like, mm -hmm. year after year. Um, but I... I I, I I worry about them losing their identity, like, mm -hmm. and about them sort of losing the magic that is what they are. Like, it's when we start to see things like Hyrule Warriors. Like, I feel like there's only so many games like that that can start to happen, or these crossover games that, like, I feel like it it just uh, dilutes a lot of properties. Like, putting Mario and 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 Mickey together is a great. Oh, it's so it's so exciting. It's exciting, <laughs> but it's it's exciting for a day. You know, in terms of like, you can make one game out of that that's decent, but I don't know you if just, you can build yeah. a legacy did you, out of Did that. you not play Mario versus Sonic at the Olympics? I mean, wasn't that what you'd wanted your whole no. life? No, not at all. Those two characters side by side. Well, like, the, it's, the, it's, yeah. that, it's that golden goose thing, right? Like, I mean, you can like kill the goose and get try to get how many eggs are in there right there, or you can get one every day for <laughs> the rest of your life. Um, and I, I just sort of feel like like it's... This whole mobile thing too, it sort of feels like it's cashing in on something at the moment, mm -hmm. and they'll get their money in the immediate future, but I think in the terms of like the long the long form plan here, I think they're gonna dilute their properties a lot, and I think that like they need to sort of maintain a focus on that. I think that like doubling down on mobile and I think merging with a bunch of other companies, I don't know if it's the best plan for them like I honestly don't i would I'd want to look into how common it is for Western companies to buy Japanese companies because yeah. it seems like it's a matter of pride. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I was, was, was going to bring that up next, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I, it's totally that as well. I, was, I think, I think how, it's extremely unlikely. But if any company from the West could pull it off, it would be Disney, which is huge in Japan. The, the value, yeah, Disney, true, yeah. Disney IPs are that's beloved true. in that country. You want, you want to have fun at Disney. You know, go see Disneyland or Disney Sea there in Tokyo and, and the enthusiasm mm -hmm. that surrounds those, those uh, properties there. That merger from a nationalistic perspective would be easier for the Japanese to swallow than most Western uh, takeovers would be. I just feel like it's a, it's a lot like Kentaco Huts. Oh, no. what, I'm sorry. What? 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 <laughs> there, there are those restaurants. They're called Kentucky Huts. They're Kentucky Fried Chickens. They're Taco Bells, and they're Pizza Huts, and they're all in one place. Thank you for clarifying that. I thought that was something a Majora's Mask I hadn't found. It totally yet. sounds like. Okay. Something. Yeah. All right. But um, they're sort of like these jack of all trades, masters of none. Where like everything is under one <laughs> roof, but they're not really doing anything very well. You mm -hmm. know. Um, and I, I don't know if that's what I want. Like, I don't know if I want Anakin Skywalker in my Mario games, or I don't know if I want, like, Donald Duck to show up in Pokemon. I know I don't want Anakin Skywalker in my Mario games. Yeah, but that's I'm a little sure bit unfair, because, like, Mario and Link don't show up in Pokemon now. Mm -hmm. Like, you still presumably have some smart people making decisions about, you know, where these lines of intersection are and aren't. I well, think it, I mean, they, they fight in Smash Brothers, right? Yeah. yeah, and that makes sense, right? No one really, like, you like that? Yeah, and Mario Kart, they can race to against extent, each other. To know? an extent, I mean, I, it's... It, it took 15 years to make the leap of letting Link drive a cart in Mario <laughs> Kart, true. right? Mm -hmm. And still, when that happened, we were just like, 
Wait, he's got a motorcycle horse? What does this mean? <laughs> but I do think it's possible without diluting the properties to take the, to take the opposite end of it. Now, just like you, I love Nintendo, and I think their identity is what makes them work. It also makes them very frustrating on yeah. occasion. And right now it's got them in a little bit of trouble, um, and they're looking for a good way out. I don't think that collaboration on cell phone games necessarily dilutes. I think that the strategy they presented is designed to reassure us into thinking that it won't dilute, that the, that, that pride remains, that that care remains. And likewise, in a Disney takeover, it would largely depend on whether Disney saw them as something to be pillaged and plundered or if they actually wanted to draw on the strengths of the company, which are this crazy, ultra-isolated, ridiculous Kyoto uh, creative mm -hmm. toy-making, game-fun-producing factory. But, if, they're all, but they're also one of the most historically isolated companies. Like, I mean, they have not worked well with third parties in, in over a decade. Really, mm -hmm. ever? I, I mean, so... Well, that's what's, not true. Well, they were combative with them all the way back from the NES. They fought with third parties. Yeah, but at least still they had an incredible third party lineup. Sure. The NES. But yeah, that changed. The, the moment the third parties had someplace else to go, though, that, that quickly changed. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would say since the N64, they've been struggling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, that's, you know, for, that's, in, yeah. for that's, third party support, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they couldn't, I mean, if, if you, if you want to make a deal with Disney on a one or five game base or, so, or something like that, pick up the phone right now and mm -hmm. do it. Like someone at Nintendo should do that, but they're incapable of doing that because they are insular and they're focused on their own IPs. Like, I think there's, a, there's an, a possibility for them to branch out right now, but if they can't do it with the 3DS and they can't do it with the Wii U, mm -hmm. and they couldn't do it with the Wii, the GameCube, or the N64, or the Game Boy Advance, or whatever, I mean, and again, it wasn't a matter of couldn't; it was a matter of wasn't weren't willing to. Yeah. they had their they had their chance several times over. Everybody, That's Sony's true. on the phone, Microsoft's on the phone. They're calling companies up. They're making mm -hmm. things happen. Nintendo hasn't done that. On the other hand, despite that, uh, just just came out on the side of, the, of that lunacy. <laughs> because of that, they do manage to produce something that's utterly theirs and. 95% of the time, what's utterly theirs is so much fun. It's really good. It's this, ama it's this amazing thing that they can pull off, that they, they don't communicate with anyone, but when they speak, it's like, it's flawless. You yeah. know, I, wanna, I wanna hear what they're saying. They so. tell me what I want better than anybody else in the <laughs> world does. Uh, good food for thought, Emperor G. Next email comes from Danny. Don't know where he's from. Let's just assume it's England. Sure. Yep. Okay. Uh, hey guys, Danny here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a new listener, and your show rocks my socks. Sweet. Ooh. Whoa. On a more serious note, okay. we recently <laughs> saw leaked scripts from Fallout 4. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't. I missed that. Yeah. And it seems that the protagonist may be voiced. Many people are down on this, heralding from the schools of Zelda and Half Life, where the main characters have a distinct lack of vocal cords. That's not true. Link makes all sorts of sounds. Hey, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Wow. That was really good. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Others, you practice? That no. was a good take on that. <laughs> Others, including <laughs> myself, Danny, like the way that voice protagonists give a game substance. What do you guys think? Should Fallout be leaning in Mass Effect and Dragon Age's direction? Regards. So... The big argument for a long time against not having voice characters has been, you know, it lets you be more immersed in, you're looking at the world through Link's eyes, and you can sort of just Speaking dissolve, of you can dissolve into this world and just be in Hyrule. But, but the problem with that, or like, you know, Gordon Freeman or any of these other people, is you're already not yourself. Like, you are a character. Like, mm -hmm. Link is a character that's not you. And so the higher and higher fidelity these games become, you know, gorgeous HD graphics and realistic worlds, and everyone else has, you know, this agency and a lot going on with them, but Link doesn't. Like, it just feels weirder and weirder the more time passes. Mm. And now it's become this, like, elephant in the room for, like, the Zelda franchise or, um, you know, maybe even a lot of Bethesda games, I guess, to be fair. Although I mainly think about it in the context oh of Zelda. my God, it's so beautiful. <laughs> right? I never, <laughs> I don't I care I never get talks. sick. Oh, my God. I never get sick of watching that trailer. Yeah, it's really, oh, really yeah, good. It's really and so, so I do think, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely in the camp of <clears throat> if you are going to claim that this character isn't, you know, you, you are a character other than yourself, then, yeah, I mean, in 2015, and beyond, you probably need to start having them talk and have sure. some say in what's going on. I was, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that like it's 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 an interesting comparison to bring up Zelda because in Zelda nobody talks. There's dialogue, but I mean in terms yeah, of sure. voice acting, yeah. there's nobody. But in Fallout, everyone's voiced but you. Yeah, everyone's voiced but you. So it's kind of different. Well, and in Fallout, like, isn't in, Liam Neeson literally your father? In, right. <laughs> in Fallout and the Elder Scrolls, you're presumably role playing a character, so yeah. you could be more. I guess, I guess that's the distinction I was kind of trying to make before: is are you conceivably yourself in this game, or are you some other person that has a name and you know and has an identity? Like Link has an identity, 
Um, you know, and Gordon Freeman has an identity, but in Fallout, you kind of get to choose your own identity. Yeah. So, so they have more of an excuse to not have you know yeah. voice acting in those games. But even so, you know, I'm playing Pillars of Eternity, and you can choose like they have. Uh, and other games do this, like Saints Row does this. You have mm -hmm. multiple options for what you want your voice to sound like. Do you want to be mm -hmm. the old lady, or the barbarian man, or the wizard man? And you kind of get to have these choices that fit in with like the character that you want to play. I totally think Fallout or um, you know Elder Scrolls could do something like that. If no one in a video game ever talked again, I would be just fine with it. I am <laughs> so, so tired well, of video kinda, game I'm characters with talking you. at me, to me, through me, with me. I, so if Zelda Wii U comes out this year and there's still no voice acting in the game, that'd be fine with you? Oh, that'd make me very totally, happy. I'm, I'm yeah. totally with Jared. I, yeah. I, would, I would love if that happened. Me too. I, I don't particularly enjoy voice acting in video games with a very few Nothing times. about that clip we just saw from Zelda makes me want to hear that guy you're jumping on go like, Hey, stop it! <laughs> yeah. like, it's just not necessary. Yeah. I guess I like it in. I like the idea that that's what he's saying. <laughs> I like it in Fallout. Don't stab me. <laughs> I like it in Fallout. This I think it's generally the voice acting is pretty good in Fallout. But like yeah. I, I just finally finished Far Cry Four, mm -hmm. and the voice act, the random voice acting of just the soldiers is just so like it's bad. I'm gonna make you pay. Yeah. That's what they sound like. <laughs> and they're so dumb. It's like you know I. I snipe somebody and they're like, he's over there. Oh, call off the search. We're looking for ghosts. Like, what? You didn't even, like, you yeah. looked for me for like five seconds. So that, that's, that's the difference between random enemy barks and like actual well, well written characters that are that's rounded what I said. out. I like it in Fallout. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I wanted to go away, just put a little exclamation point over their heads when they detect me, and I'm fine. I, is, you know, I, you yeah. know. But it's good. I, sure. I, I don't know. I wouldn't write off the entire thing just because Far Cry does it in kind of a ham fisted way. Like, I actually thought the enemy barks in Tomb Raider were good. Because yeah. they changed over the course yeah. of the game. Like, they went from being like, oh, you know, this is no problem. We can take her out, you know, find her, get her, to like by the end of the game, they're really, really terrified of Lara. They're like, it's her. Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> like, they're kind of treating her like Batman by the end of yep. the game. Yeah. That's yeah. true. And so, uh, you know, um,. But even the enemy barks, they, they always strike me as kind of an afterthought. Even yeah, I don't, I don't know if all of it should be gone. I mean, that's that's an interesting point. It's, it's it would be weird for me to say personally. I like I'm friends with a, a bunch of voice actors. So it would be like you guys don't have work anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, You're I, done. I, I, Jared replaced you with an exclamation. Mark. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean you know we'll, we'll subsidize them or something. Yeah. We'll become a progressive country. We'll we'll subsidize voice actors and we'll get rid of uh, annoying dialogue. So and what video. do you what yeah, do you do with a game like Uncharted? What do I do with it? Yeah. I shut them up. I, I, I'm not kidding. I, I, Nate, no! I, I, I'm taking, I, I'm taking a, a ridiculous position here, I realize. I, of course, I don't want all voice to appear in yeah. videos, but I wouldn't, in my own little private universe where nobody ever bothers me, Nathan Drake wouldn't have a voice. So when you play games, do you turn off? Like, Whenever possible, possibly I turn, turn it off. Voice. Whenever really? possible, I turn voice off. I didn't even know you I could do that. I turn subs on games. and voice off whenever I can. Oh, what if yeah. it's a JRPG and you can turn on a Japanese voice track? Always Japanese. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, you turn it off? I, no, if, if I, if, well, usually they don't give the choice. They just give you English or Japanese in that case. And I take Japanese because... But I'm saying it's, it's a game that you can play either English, Japanese, or turn it off. Oh, it's still turn it off. Oh, I'd want to hear the Japanese. <laughs> yeah. I like to hear the Japanese. Yes. So this, ne? But I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think that Ooh. every game so should have voice acting. Some people feel that way, and they're, they're like, come on, Nintendo, get with the times. Link needs to talk. Like, no, he doesn't. That's just a narrative decision they made. Like, what voice would Link have if he did talk? Would he be like Justin Jamie did. Kennedy? Yeah, Justin did it already. No, but it, I, it actually the, spoke. The like, thing about Zelda is, it, it, again, like the games are becoming more and more realistic. The worlds are becoming more realistic. All the other characters have like interesting things to say, at least in the written word. And so it, it's, it feels like the elephant in the room that Link doesn't and continues to not speak or have anything. He's not, you know, no character. You don't know what his thoughts are on anything. Like, no, you know what his thoughts no. are. He's got emotions. You have, to be, you have to handle it really carefully because I do want to say the counter argument is that Metroid did it very poorly. And sort of ruined mm -hmm. Samus in a lot of ways. In so it's other, like other M. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's always it, been it's a little in, weird in fusion. I think it's always been implied, or sometimes been implied, that Link is talking. You just can't hear him. Like people in the game are just like, "So where are you heading? Oh, okay. Well, mm -hmm. here's where you should go." And it's like, well, yeah. somehow they were able to translate that dot dot dot. That right. He said. That's what I mean. So like the twists that like Nintendo's going through, the contortions they're going through to avoid it just sort of starting to feel weird. Oh, I don't know me. if they're all contortions, though. I mean, yeah. you make a valid point. I agree that, that, that abstraction's a problem, but there's a lot of abstractions in video games you'd have to get rid of before I'm going to worry about voice. I mean, this, you know, you, you were talking a couple of weeks ago on Scoop in, in Boston about, uh, about, you know, you're playing through the game and then suddenly you're attacked by robots. It's this big, mm -hmm. beautiful world, and then robots attack. Yeah. Video games are stupid. Yeah. Weird, nonsensical things happen in video games because they're fun. 
And I, I'm not Yeah, like too, that pinata guy that yeah, we just fought. I'm not too worried about the threshold of realism in, in that regard. I also think we we haven't we've gone through this whole topic and not talked about the value of silent protagonists. When you think about somebody like Shell in Portal or Portal 2, when shutting up is a virtue. Yeah. Uh, and makes a game better. Uh, and that happens sometimes. Sure. Hopefully we will find out in just a few months whether or not our protagonist is silent in Fallout 4. Or Zelda. Or Zelda, yeah. <laughs> I think we know the answer in that case. <clears throat> Get off of me! <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> blip, 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 blip. <laughs> Let's run down some quick headlines this week. Broken Age Act 2 is out April 28th, and with it, on that same day, it comes to PlayStation platforms, both Acts 1 and 2. Yay. Yeah, there really, really, really liked Act 1. Um, might have to replay it, because it's been a long, long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it came out in January of last year, so over a year now, so. Oh my yeah. god. Without yeah. any spoilers, wonderful, wonderful twist in the last moment There's there. There's a fantastic twist at the end of yeah. that game, and I'm, uh, yeah, I can usually take or leave video game twists, I find them kind of, mm -hmm. you know, cheesy, but it was so well done, and it really makes you rethink everything you just saw and experienced. Yeah, and I just can't wait to see where they go with that. Yeah, what like, a great game. Yeah, yeah. super great game. Uh, also this week, Iwata has commented on the NX console. Nintendo's NX will surprise players and change video gaming life. Just like every other console that's ever been announced, ever. He uh, said in an interview, you only, you only, if you only expand upon existing hardware, it's dull in some shape or form. We're always thinking about how we want to surprise players as well as our desire to change each person's video gaming life. Right. That, yeah, no, Nintendo I, I, does, oh, no I, I think he's he's 100% right, which is why they put out the new Nintendo 3DS this year, <laughs> which is a 3DS with a nipple on it and the word new. That was not a, a, a slight iteration at all on anything More they were doing More powerful before. processor, Brian. Damn it. Uh, yeah, I, I get what he means. But again, but okay, so we, we shouldn't make fun of him, life. though. Okay, we're, we, we've been making fun of him, but the fact is, again, Nintendo it. does crazy better than anybody, so when they say they're going to innovate, I believe them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're yeah. going to show us something we haven't seen I mean, before. every home console has been radically different than the last ever since. The only one that was more of like a direct iteration was like the NES to the SNES. And yeah. ever since then, they've been doing something pretty nuts with each home console. Well, so. it's just sort, it's sort of like you see a guy at a party smoking a cigarette, and you see him three months later, and he's like, I don't smoke anymore. Smoking's bad. You shouldn't smoke. And you're like, you just did that. Mm -hmm. The last time I saw you, that's what you were doing. Like, for 15 years, they were like, here's the Game Boy, here's the Game Boy Color, here's the Game Boy Pocket, here's the well, Game yeah. Boy Advance, here's the Game Boy today. Advance SP, the Game Boy Light, all those things. Those were slight iterations on something they were doing before. And they're basically calling their, their back history dull. I'm so happy you brought up the Game Boy Light. That just, that just warms the oh, cockles yeah, sure, in my heart. Course. Do you have a Game Boy Light? No, I don't. Oh, that's so wonderful. All right. I wasn't a schoolboy in Japan. Oh. <laughs> Next up, Atari. Founded in 1972. <laughs> Tell me res more. Responsible for some of the most iconic properties and mm -hmm. systems in video game history. Inventors of the bullshot. The bullshot. What is Which that? Which was basically putting a painting on a cover and making it look oh, like it was yes. in-game yeah. graphics. Yes. <laughs> uh, still around today, but pretty much a name only in a company that owns the Atari IP. Mm -hmm. uh, filed for bankruptcy in 2013. Slimmed down to 10 total employees. Wow. Started focusing on social casino games. Mm -hmm. But if you turn your eyes to the App Store, recently you can find Atari Fit. <laughs> their new wow. mobile fitness app. This is what Atari does today. The history of Atari is so confusing because there are multiple Ataris. You know, uh, yeah. the, the company split. And uh, you know, one company owned like the name Atari, but then a different group owned all of Atari's old games. Right, Atari Games and Atari. Yeah. So Atari Games and Atari, and then it's not clear how uh, you know Atari sued Jeff Mentor recently too. And I'm like, which Atari was that? Was that these guys or the other guys? And yeah. like, yeah, at this point, Atari is, is less a family tree than like a sagebrush. Well, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's really confusing. <laughs> but you you have the you have the Atari Fed product come out here. I met with Atari during GDC and was it this Atari? The, no, uh, well, I don't know because I didn't know about Atari Fed. Uh, they were working on a, an Asteroids property, actually. Okay. That they that like a new asked. Asteroids game. Yeah, um, which is a like a oh, that's right. a first person MMO. Um, yeah, it's it's not what you think when you think Asteroids. Uh, but uh, it, I don't know which branches from the historical 1972 group we're talking about here. To think about how this company's changed, we were talking about Apple earlier. Atari seriously considered buying Apple uh, a few years after the you know after Atari was founded. That we've gone from that 
to this kind of fragmentation. I do believe that there's still the possibility for good things to come out of that Atari name. There's a great back catalog of ideas that you can draw from. I'm frustrated by what we saw with Jeff Menner last week, uh, coming after him for creating a well shooter. You know, it's not like Jeff Menner is the only person in the world that's ever made a well shooter, and I think mm -hmm. that's really kind of an awful thing to do. Tempest um, being a well shooter, if you don't know. Yeah, sorry, I should have explained that. But. Uh, no, I, I don't know anything about Atari Fit, but I'd like to see more good things come out of that name. There's a wonderful lineage there and uh, a lot to draw from in those products. Maybe Blade Runner can still come true. Oh, which which well, Blade Runner? Just Atari showing up in... The Atari logo is in Blade Runner. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of Westwood's Blade Runner adventure game. I got mixed mm -hmm. up. Uh, real quick, Gyrus or Tempest? For me? Yeah. Uh, Tempest. Ooh, I would pick Gyrus. Yeah. They're both great. Um, anyway, as you earn points, as you do your workouts in Atari Fit and earn points, you can unlock Atari games. Like oh. Pong, Breakout, Centipede. And then stop exercising. Yeah. Yep. Which is what video games make you do. And finally this week, for that special princess in your life. It's you, Jared. Think oh, Geek is you. selling a Zelda Aww. dress. For are, four, are these in oh, child right. or adult for sizes? For $40. I assume they're young adult sizes. It could be a good Halloween costume. Yeah. You know, if you turn it inside out, is it chic? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Smoke bomb. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of her moves. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, all right, IGN's been around a long time. I think we became IGN in 1998, but even before that, uh, our like planet sites were reviewing games. So we've got a lot of reviews over the years. <clears throat> Would it surprise you to know that over the years, all those years, We've only scored about 58 or so, less than a two. Wow, really? Yeah. Wow. So I've come up with a list of 58 games that IGN has scored lower than a two. So there's wow. only been 58 bad games in history. Yep. Well, All right. that are that bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, this doesn't include a lot of mobile games. I, didn't, I just didn't gather all that data. Mm -hmm. But yeah, 58 console and PC games that have received scores lower than a two. From IGN. Are we going to call out <clears throat> the injustices among these? Or? I, 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 don't think you'll, I don't think you're going to be fighting for any of these. <laughs> so if we start with the 1.9s. Wow. All right. We've so we're got in descending orders, yeah. starting at 1.9. Right. Yes. Got it. Swamp Buggy Racing on PC from the year 2000. Uh -huh. Then there was Spogs Racing on the Wii. Spogs, Spogs it Racing. Sounds like, it sounds like someone, like, what's the name of our game? And then they had a typo. And you it's were like, just, oh, fuck it. You were just, <laughs> it's too late. Sounds like a, like you were a, just talking about Pogs. This is the racer that was like, you race Pogs. What? This game looks oh, awesome. On the, okay. so, but it's on the Wii? It was a WiiWare game. Oh. Downloadable racing insanity. I can't even tell what I'm looking at. Like, what I know. They so, look like the Tron Light Cycles. I, I, I reviewed this game for IGN, gave it a 1.9. Uh, a quote from my review is, it's an absolute joke that developer D2C is charging money for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They missed the whole point of Pogs. Yeah, like... Are you and sure? No, this is nothing like Pogs. I was going to say, is this an actual Pog reference? <laughs> These are insane. Yeah, that's a, that was the whole thing. They're Spogs. Speed Pogs. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's like a Wallace and Gromit yeah. character. Spogs. Anyway, moving on. Wow. Falling, Falling Stars, a PS2 game from 2008. Okay. Uh, IHRA I Drag Racing, oh. Xbox game from 2004, and then Pulse Racer, Xbox game from 2002. A lot of racing oh, I remember that game. Yeah. Hillary Goldstein reviewed it. Here's, here's the opening to his review It's 2024, and racing has taken a new form. You go fast, you go ruthless, and you go all out. Here's the catch. Race too fast, and you'll actually get so excited, so pumped, you'll have a heart attack. <laughs> That's right. Race too fast, you have a heart attack. This is the grand concept behind Pulse Race, Racer, easily one of the worst racers on the market. So yeah, it's, it's a racing game where you've got a governor built into your vehicle. Like you can't yeah, like go a reverse a speed. speed. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh. Don't go over 50 <coughs> where the bus explodes. explodes. Oh, wow. I want to play that now. <laughs> and the last 1.9 was The Tale of Despero. Which was that was an animated film that movie from was cute. 2008, and I guess the games were really bad. Not to be confused with Destro. Okay. Yeah. Only one 1.8. Oh, one 1.8. Isn't that history. crazy? Top top history? History? You know why? Because that number makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit worse than the tale of Destro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Deep sea trophy fishing. Oh, I've PC. seen this. Is that one? Uh, it's a sequel to Deep Sea Trophy Wives. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we scored a 1.7 on the action. <laughs> We've got three 1.7s. Instinct on PCs, uh, survival horror game from 2007. Jenga World Tour on the Wii in 2008. Jenga? <laughs> Jenga yeah. World Tour, a Wii game. Wait, I, I gotta you? take this Jenga all over the world. <laughs> Do you keep saying Jenga or Jenga? <laughs> Jenga. 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 Yeah. Okay. Why are you saying Jenga? You say Jenga. Jenga. I say Jenga. G E N G A. Jenga. With the blocks, right? No, J. First, J E. Yeah, J. <laughs> Jenga. I'm going to bed. Jenga? Like it was J I N G A? Well, I don't say Jenga. I say Jenga. Jenga. Where do you get a Ang? Jenga. <laughs> Anyway, how do you say bagels? The other, <laughs> we're not getting into that. The other 1.7 is Alvin and the Chipmunks movie tie-in. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, the squeakquel or, ch or ch uh, chipwrecked? The first one, I don't know. <laughs> or piece of chip. How do you know a piece of chip? <laughs> uh, now, in the 1.5s, this might be a controversial uh, pick. Rogue Warrior, which our artist from back here. Right. Some people actually claim to like that game. Mm -hmm. That was the one where, uh, what's his name, the actor uh, from... Uh, Mickey Rourke? It's Mickey Rourke, yeah. yeah. He uh, voiced the main character. And then there was an epic rap song. At Wasn't the end um, Jim Riley, who Jim used Riley to work here. He swore by that game. Big defense force for this game. Yeah. I don't see why or how. He was one of the only people that I yeah, knew who was really fighting for it. Jim but. Riley didn't have a lamp in his house. Yeah. <laughs> quaint, what? Quaint, wonderful man. Hello, Jim. <laughs> hey, Jim. <laughs> in, in 2002, we reviewed an original PlayStation game called Beyblade Let It Rip. Mm -hmm. Okay. That got a 1.5. Wow. Uh, the oldest game on our list is China Warrior. Oh! Turbo Graphics 16 game from 1989. Big Why sprites! Big, because big sprites! It came to WiiWare. Oh. And Lucas Thomas reviewed it. He gave it a 1 5? Yeah. His, his review opens with Hello, this is one of the worst games to ever actually see a commercial <laughs> retail release in the United States. No, seriously. No, I, I, I'm going to. Why did he start <laughs> with the hello? Why did he start with the hello? Just get that out of there. I'm going to come up with a defense of China Warrior. Okay, Ch China you like Warrior. China Warrior. China, China Warrior is not a good video game. It's not 1.5 bad. Not, they're, not they're, as bad as 1.5. Yeah, bad. there are things, there are, there are so compre she, comprehensible things happening in China Warrior. People are throwing potatoes at you from off screen. You're being so attacked it, by monks. Does he, end the, does he end the review with goodbye? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so China Warrior should have been just merely bad. It should yeah, have been a four. Not it's just not, or... yeah, it's not obscenely bad. Okay. China no, Warrior was just a marketing gimmick. They wanted to show that the Turbo yeah. Graphics can make Huge sprites, and when you do that, there's no room on your screen for anything else. And that that's actually the problem. the problem with scores this low. It's like I think <laughs> I gave Final Fantasy All the Bravest a 2.5. Yeah. And it's abysmal. It's <laughs> awful. But it's got Final Fantasy music and sprites, and so I'm like, well, some people might get some enjoyment oh, right. out of it that. in that way. So yeah. like to get down this low. Yeah. Did you start did you also no. begin your review with a friendly greeting? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. 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 China Warrior was entertaining enough that I played all the way through it. I mean that that's that's better that's than one. That's a box uh, quote. Two DS games in 2007 got a 1.5. Spelling challenges and more, and backyard football. Oh, I thought you were going to say ping pals. No. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on the Wii, which you talked about at our PAX East panel. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, now, <laughs> in 1999, Tal reviewed a PC game called Extreme Boards and Blades. Oh, wow. Is so that I TNT assume surf skate, design skateboarding and rollerblading? Ooh. Here's a quote from his... His review, this game would be more aptly titled Extremely Bored, Now Kill Me. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Nin Good. Ninja Bread Man was uh, on the Wii oh, in 2008. I remember, I remember Ninja There was like Red a Man. series of just, the shovelware on the Wii was so oh, yeah. bad. Well, Ninja because they, I think it was be before people knew they could put those on the iPhone, or they couldn't put them on the iPhone. And yeah. it was yeah, so they could cheap. also charge like $40 for yeah. them on the Wii. Yeah. yeah, and they cost nothing to develop for. I mean, that yeah. you were just uh, If you ever go to buy a t-shirt at Old Navy, you can probably probably buy a lot of these games because they have like in their their section they as your Wii games in their bin. There's like random old Wii <laughs> shovelware games, astronaut yeah. ice cream, and like jump ropes. No, I found like, a copy right. of like Sonic's Ultimate Genesis collection at a Rite Aid. A Isn't few that weeks weird? Ago. Yeah, I love so shopping weird. for games to play. Uh, they like TJ Maxx, I think, is, sells games like that too. You know like why? Because that. that store is a disaster. At Burlington <laughs> Coat Factory, yep. you'll find them there too. Yep. Uh, oh, I like two what's more, about to yeah. happen. Two more DS games. Wiffle Ball. They made Wiffle Ball for <laughs> DS. Is it just? It's just called Wiffle Ball. Yep. Not even yeah. a year. Sports. Yeah. Yeah. Sports. And then Deal or No Deal. Also get the, the <laughs> Howie Mandel TV show. That's Howie Mandel, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, that got a 1.5. Now check out this game. This PC game from 2002. Bikini Karate Babes. Aww. Ah. This is. This got a 1.5. This <laughs> looks awesome. I've never heard of this game. How do I? Oh my god. <laughs> Jamie, we have to do a let's play of this game. This looks what? amazing. 
No, this, oh, oh my god. I know. We should totally do a let's oh, do oh, oh, she Wow, doing? she's cleaning it's her like, butt with that not, That's not hot. What are you doing? It's just not okay. No, that <laughs> one point go back was and back too to high. The, I want that B-roll to come back up. <laughs> 1.5 was too high for um, What yeah. console is that on I can, That was a PC game from 2002. I cannot believe I did not know about the game, nor did I know about Panty Raider from Here to Immaturity, also a PC game from Why were they in a field? Yeah, they were fighting in a field. <laughs> With a... <laughs> Uh, listeners, if you if you just listen <laughs> to the GameScoop podcast, look up footage of bikini karate babes. <coughs> I, yeah, I, do don't, I don't think you should recommend that to anyone. Don't do that at work. No, no. don't do it anywhere. Probably not. Don't don't listen to Damon. Yeah, you are going to get the weirdest firing. <laughs> <laughs> also on PC, Extreme Bull Rider got a one point five, mm. and finally Rock'em Sock'em Robots on Game Boy Advance. Oh, oh wow, 5. never played that. Only one one point four. Just, that's fascinating to me. We've reviewed so many games over the years. I wonder if there's any one. score we've never given. Mm, mm. That's interesting. Uh, Myth Makers, Trixie, and Toyland for the Wii. <laughs> that, okay. old, that old chestnut. <laughs> uh, only one, 1. 1.3. <laughs> Carmageddon 64. Oh, oh, man. That's way too low for that game. That should have gotten at least a three. Really? Well, it, it, wasn't Carmageddon 64 the one that was like fundamentally broken, like oh. the clipping problems? I guess yeah. I don't, really, I don't. If I remember. Uh, this is a long time ago, but yeah. I, th I think I remember that game having really like fundamental problems. Casa Messina reviewed it said, I never thought it would happen, but there is now actually a game on the market that's worse than Superman 64. Ooh. <laughs> It was probably like ninety dollars too when it came out. That well, was it was a sixty-four game. Yeah. yeah. So three one point twos, mini desktop racing on the Wii, Balls of Fury on the Wii, which is a movie tie-in or yeah. the ping pong game. Yeah, that was a weird ass. That film. was Christopher Walken. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And on the PC, Call for Heroes: Pompolic Wars. Call for Heroes. Yeah. <laughs> War of Battle. <laughs> heroes wanted. Hero of the <laughs> Seven Gun. Only one, 1. 1.1, Nickelodeon Party Blast on the Xbox. <laughs> oh, there we go. Should this get a one? No, no, it's, no. it's not that bad. All right, no, so it's got slime in it. Here begin the ones, and there's a great many ones we've given over the years. Fantasy Aquarium on the DS. Okay. Oh, I wanted that one to be good. Elf Bowling 1 and 2 oh, on the DS. Man. On the Wii, Kids Sports International Soccer, it's L London it's Taxi Rush Hour. It's a lot of Wii DS. Kids bloody, Sports yeah. Ice Hockey. Motocross Championship on the 32X from 1995. Jeez. That was a oh, Levi wow. Buchanan retro review. Oh, wow, so he yeah. just went, he's out of nowhere, he's like, I'm gonna pull this game from 15 years ago and just rip it to shreds. On the 32X. Yeah. What's the VPH on that? <laughs> uh, on the GBA, NFL Blitz 2003. Mm -hmm. Original PlayStation game, Fantastic Four. Got a one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, on the Xbox and PS2, High Rollers Casino from 2004. See the Contra Adventure on the original PlayStation. Was apparently so bad it earned a one. I, I never remember played it. See the Contra. Oh, I actually have uh, I have footage of this one. I can. I remember see the Contra Adventure being okay. Yeah. I mean, not I good. Know. No, it wasn't good. But <laughs> definitely I definitely not as good as the uh, original. Contra. My personal like. Does this look like a one? Well, it yeah. looks pretty bad. But this, even if it's not good, this right, is the original this is a PlayStation. PS One game. Well, yeah. there might there might be something else to it. I mean, again, there could be just something horribly broken where you clip through levels. No, I want to be yeah. super clear. This is not a good game. But I, I mean, I would I would give it. A, I probably would have gotten a five. <laughs> Should we re-review it? He does just seem to be running forward with his flames going. And it yeah. looks like a Game Boy Advance game. Yeah. Also on the PlayStation, the original PlayStation Revolution X. Which oh, if I the remember correctly, Aerosmith. Was Aerosmith. Yeah, the Aerosmith game. game. Yeah. And The Simpsons Wrestling on PlayStation got a one. Yeah. I forgot that was even a game. That mm. seems like that would be easy. Like, yeah. just put Simpsons, just remake uh, Pro Wrestling on the NES and reskin it with Simpsons yeah, characters. Yeah, but Homer yeah. fighting Marge, I guess yeah. that's okay. Homer will eat Marge as yeah, you've, like yeah. Amazon. <laughs> you've been through the GBA games already on the, on the ones? So we gave. Well, so Elf they're not in order of consoles. Oh, okay, so. cool. I wonder, because Elf Bowling was on GBA too, I think. Oh, okay, then. Yeah, so sure. I was wondering. Sure. Throw, throw it on the pile. I'm pulling one and two. It's a Extreme great Christmas Extreme Water Sports and Kawasaki ATV Power Sports are both PC games. Mm -hmm. Are those two separate games? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Off-Road Extreme Special Edition <laughs> on the Wii. <laughs> PDC World Dart Championships on the <laughs> PS2. Wow. Okay. And uh, NRA Varmint Hunter. I've got oh, the box go. art for... Dude, NRA. you're not oh, even Oh, no. Hunting. This is the, uh, the title screen. It's not even like hunting bears or like Varm lions. No, this is <laughs> NRA, the title screen for NRA Varmint Hunter. Oh, my that God. That just makes me want to cry. <laughs> why? Is, why? No. Okay, first of all. Kill the little woodchuck. There's, there's, the, there's the, the woodchuck guy, and then there, he's there again in the top, but I as a cartoon. I think they're groundhogs. Yeah, prairie dogs. 
This but, reminds me of iPhone garbage. Yeah, it's just yeah, wow, it's but, really bad. There are so many. There's <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight prairie dogs on this. Title eight screen. varmints. <laughs> eight varmints. The one yeah. and the an lower eagle. left is like worshiping the giant varmints. <laughs> yes, he's like praying to the giant varmint god. Uh, Self defense training camp was a Kinect game on Xbox 360. I think I think Mitch had to do that one. That means if you bought that game and tried to learn self defense, you probably got beat up after. Yeah, probably. ESPN NBA Two Night. The, it's a numeral two night Ooh. on the Dreamcast. Right. Too legit to quit. Kids sports basketball. Here's a, here's a trio of, of Wii, <laughs> Wii games. Kids sports basketball, Monster Trucks Arenas Special Edition, and Step Up. Now you keep mentioning these Special Edition ones. Like, does that mean that there's a craptastic er uh, yeah. version of it out there somewhere? Like, that's not sure. special. Our last two original PlayStation games are the Crow, or that earned a one, are the Crow City of Angels. And Freestyle Borden, 99. <laughs> Borden? Freestyle yeah. Borden. Borden. All right, the two lowest scores getting a, coming in at a .8, so I guess there's no .9. Oh, oh wow. And maybe that answers our question. .8 on the Wii. Action Girls Racing, and girls is spelled G-U-R-L-Z. Okay. Oh. There we go. Uh, another Lucas Thomas joint. Here's an excerpt from the review. Oh, Lucas. It's a horrid product full of terrible track designs, lifeless characters, and glitched programming that's only service to its developer and publisher is to make all their other bargain bin games look better by comparison. So let's send it off with the score seemingly most appropriate for 2008, 0.8. So wait, so he just decided <laughs> to give it a... What if, so if the game came out in 2007? We got an 07. Yeah, he concluded it. with, <clears throat> good night. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. And the lowest score in IGN console and PC history is Extreme Paint Brawl on the PC from 1998. No, I thought I, it was that hockey game. I have. Well, so there are a couple caveats. Okay. There is a Mo Looney Tunes mobile game from 2003 that got a yeah. 1.5. <laughs> and then there's one game that got a zero on the N64 because they changed. The, they didn't change the game at all. They just updated the box art and released it again. Okay. Oh, wow. So it was like... The Olympics 97, they just re-released it as Olympics 98, and, or whatever it was. And, I have and, then, and then the review <laughs> says, when they make a new game, we'll write a new review. <laughs> yeah. I have played Extreme Paint Brawl, and point eight might be too high. Too like, high. It's, it's that bad. I'm surprised to not see like Big Rigs on there. Maybe Big Rigs is probably review. like a two or three. Yeah. There you have it. 58 games that IGN scored lower than a two, but I, oh. I, I'm surprised there's only been... I feel you just games. accomplished a great public service there. I think honestly. so. I, I, think I like to think you so. made the world a safer place. There's a running theme there, though. Like it's a lot of a lot of sports that no one thinks is sports make bad games. Usually, a lot of kids' versions of sports make bad games. Anything Christmas related is a rank, it's going straight to the trash. Well, I think a lot of shovelware yeah. sports games happen because you don't have to create rules. Yeah. You know, you, you just take something else and you're like, okay, uh, we'll just apply numbers to this, and mm -hmm. now it's a game, and we already we don't have to invent baseball; it already exists, so we'll just yeah, adapt. Same, it. same with racing, though. There's like a lot of really bad uh, racing that's, games. That's that's easy. Left. That's because the only things you really have to program in a racing game if you're going to do it badly are left and right. Mm -hmm. you yeah, know, but it, it feels like you should be able to make a racing game merely bad and not like what is one? What is one on a scale? Painful? painful? I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, real quick before we go, what are we playing over the weekend? Uh, Pillars of Eternity, which is you love it, old school you RPG. Re you read the fiction on it. I did. I bought. I bought the guidebook, which is not a guide for beating the game. It's like the lore and the history of the dwarven settlements and just like the history of the world. <laughs> I'm flipping through that. Pillars of Eternity is really, really legit and really good. I picked up a copy of Alien Infestation for three bucks the other day. Wait, which one is that? That's, that's the, the Double Fine, or not Double Fine, oh, pardon yeah. me, that's the WayForward uh, DS game, the yep, side scrolling yeah. kind of Metroidvania 3DS, one. 3DS, right? Yeah, uh, no, DS. Original it's an DS. old DS game. And uh, really good, mm. uh, very solid. We gave it an eight, well, I think it's well does. deserved. Uh, I've yeah, never played that, I've always wanted to. It's a lot of fun, it's not perfect, it's got problems, but it's got a way more good ideas than it has problems. Is it like Metroidvania? -ish? Yeah, it's Metroidvania ish okay. and, and, yeah. and a lot of fun. I'm, cool. I'm really enjoying it. I'm probably gonna finish that this weekend. Nice. Speaking of Metrovanias, I'm playing Axiom Verge, oh, which is yes. Uh, yes. really very dark, but it's also it's 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 this kind of really interesting cover song of the games that we yeah. grew up playing. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't know if it's I haven't really discovered yet if it's doing enough on its own to be sort of like. Wow, this is this is really one of the best Metroidvanias ever. But I really do appreciate that it exists, and the entire game was made by one person, and it's yeah. coming to PS4. So check it out. Yeah, I'm also replaying Super Metroid. There you go. I feel like I should bring that up. Nice. Oh, how often do you do that? Uh, actually, not that often. No, not once a year, and it's my favorite game ever. And I'm like, oh, 
I haven't played that. I haven't played it since I worked at IGN. I've been here four years. So, I thought so it's it was... like a religious pilgrimage? Like, are you doing this purposefully, or are you just like, uh, I want to play this old game? I, like I don't know. Everybody was talking about Bloodborne, and I was like, well, I want to curl up with, like, one of my favorites, like, putting on an old sweater. Yeah, I'm good with that. Uh, I have a flight this weekend, flying home to Kansas City, and I never played Mutant Muds. Yeah. Oh. So I'm downloading that to the 3DS. Yeah, I actually like it best on 3DS. It came yeah. to a bunch of platforms, but yeah, it, it works best on 3DS. Yeah. Um, just the controls felt good. Uh, yeah, that's a very hard game. It's really hard? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of like platforming timing things in that game that like if you've been platforming your whole entire life, they actually throw you off. A lot of the sort of like disappearing platform stuff yeah. in Mega Man 2, they build a lot of foundations of levels out of that. Yep. It's fun. That's cool. Not great on iPad. No. I do yeah. like it on 3DS. Yeah. All right, I think that's all the scoops we have for you this week. Remember, you can always reach us at the email address, gamescoop at IGN.com. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Brian. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out.